Welcome back, everybody. We got another exciting episode talking about AI and specifically, how do you actually drive this thing called chat GTP or just AI in general? So in order to kind of talk about that, I've brought in Logan Monday, of course, who's our, uh, we'll just say you're the local resident when it comes to uh, AI expertise. You spend a lot of time teaching people how to use prompts or how to use chat GTP, which means you're really teaching people how do you effectively communicate with it? Because it's kind of like you had a great car analogy, by the way. And I guess before we get into that, we should probably let you say, I, I'm just excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today because it, the power really is in the prompt. But anyhow, Logan, say hi, would you? <laughs> well, that's a powerful introduction, Ryan. I love love it so much, and I really look forward to our chats each week. I'm excited to be here. It really is about the power of prompting and what it can do for each of us when we're using AI like ChatGPT and Google Bard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, you had a great analogy. So before we actually get into the deck, which is going to help us stay on focus, because otherwise we already we kind of talked about this earlier, the fact that there's it's not even it's not that it's a can of worm it's like an ocean of worms as yeah. far as what you can talk about so being able to stay focused but i think a great analogy that you talked about was a conversation that you had with your grandmother and kind of what her experience was many years ago and then versus what we're experiencing today can you share that yeah yeah i'm very fortunate in that she's still with us today and that in the um oh the 40s late 30s early 40s She's she driving. And so she's was I was talking to her about AI and how to use it and technology. And so we were answering questions for her over the weekend. And she looked at me and said, you know, I remember when I first started driving, we we had to have instructors because you didn't know what to do and how to do it. And she goes, I keep hearing these people talk about stuff. And it sounds like they're trying to get you to drive the car with a mechanic. And a mechanic mm -hmm. doesn't drive the car, they fix it, they, they work on it. And that's kind of how AI is right now with prompt engineers and machine learning engineers. They're incredibly talented and they're incredible what they do. And without them, we wouldn't right. have AI. But they're kind of, in a way, mechanics for how the, the, the car works. But what we need are instructors of how you use it for your benefit. And that's my role. And yeah. today we're going to talk about how the power of prompting is going to let you drive that car with ease. Okay, perfect. And so, uh, like I said earlier, in order to keep us on focus and on track, you've got this nice slide deck that we're going to go through. And I think it's really important. And part of what we've talked about in the past is the importance of not getting overwhelmed. So mm -hmm. find something that works and then keep on using it. The problem is if you don't know what works because you you never experienced driving a car. What does the steering wheel do? What does this, you know, back in the old days, it was on the column. What does this thing do versus, you know, what are these flappy things down on the floorboard? If you don't know what all those are, it's really hard to drive the car. And that's really what prompting is, is how do you get the AI to work as, as your personal assistant, which is what it's designed to do. Yeah, and it's kind of like right now the way uh, like ChatGPT is set up and the Google Bard, it, they just have that open look about them. Right. So it's <laughs> kind of like the first time when um, you get in a car and you have to learn how to drive a stick shift, right? Right. Like you, those flappy things. There's down a little. There, there's a little of this going thing. on. Like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna? What am I gonna do? <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a start and stop. Um, I think I've only stalled out my car a couple of times in my life, but everyone yeah. does it. Like you got to yeah. figure it out before you before you get through it. And that's what we're here to do today is kind of show you how the prompts really don't need to be about everything or anything. They really can. You can only use ChatGPT or this or some of these AI programs only for the things that you work on. Right. Right. And you don't have to worry about anything else. But if you know what you need to write for what you're doing, you'll get the best results every time. So you'll spend right. time on what you care about and not on the work that AI is supposed to make simpler for you anyways. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's kind of a, a starting place, if you will. When I talk to people about this that who have or like kind of like your grandma is like, I've heard about this AI thing, this chat GTP, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it. I go, just imagine having a personal assistant 
that has access to pretty much all the information in the world. You're simply having a conversation. That's it. So just yeah. start at the beginning. What is it that you would like to know? And yeah. in doubt, and I think we talked about this in the last show, and if in doubt, just ask a question. What What do you need to know in order to help help you help me or help me help you, whichever way that goes? Yeah, it, I mean, it really is like an assistant. And, you know, my whole goal with what I do is to help people make AI their assistant and to right. make it work for you. Um, so if you want, you want to get right in and, and yeah, let's go ahead and let's bounce into this. Yeah. So I just want to say with a, a touch of point of pride that, uh, you were asking me earlier before, like, Oh, Hey, what AI did you <laughs> use to make this? And I just said, well, you know, backgrounds in teaching and I did some content design. So, I, you know, this is all me. All right. Um, but I will say that for, you know, a lot of the content that I've created, I use AI to help with it. And part of the reason why it's so hard to do like visuals and presentations like this with using ai right now is that it's really difficult to convey to all people a simple story name oh <laughs> we just let's just well cat's part of the conversation here <laughs> great thing about cats they don't care they're they're they there for care. you whether you yep. want them or not i woke up this yep. morning and he was like right there on my face <laughs> um so what the, the great thing about with what you know AI can do is that it's really great with data. It's really great with predictions. It's really hard on creating its own story. And, right. and you know there are templates for it, but when it comes to mixing words and visuals and holding that in a narrative for what you want, it's not there yet. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about like why it's a big deal now and why AI is not going away, it's because ChatGPT is out, Google Bard's out, and Jasper, they're all kind of the leaders in you telling it what to do and it making it and giving you options. Right. And that's so different than anything else we've ever done before. Right. Right. And when you go through, you know, the way that those programs are called, they're called generative AI, and they just work through prompts. And we all have prompts every day, no matter where you are in the world or where you're from. And when I go to the coffee store, they'll say, hey, um, what would you like to order today? That's right. a prompt because they want an expectation from you on what that you will tell them what you're going to do. And in that, you, you will listen and hear or see their tone, their style, and you'll respond accordingly. We all know that barista that's you know super easygoing and fun and makes ordering the best thing ever. Right. Or you, know, you have someone who's having a bad day and you can just hear it in their voice. ChatGPT and generative AI can't hear that. It doesn't know that. You have to tell it. Right. And that's kind of what is what's different than what you and I do every day. All right. Is that the cue to go to the next slide? Well, I was going to say that with like <laughs> some of the, I'll show you the next slide and on it, you'll see like there's a thing called general prompts. And that's like, can you pass the salt? Like they're oh, really okay. simple, yeah. they're really open-ended, they're easy. And normally when you get a response from ChatGPT, that's when you like mix stuff together. It's like mm -hmm. take Tupac's album and rewrite it into a Shakespearean sonnet, right? right. Same words, but just written in a different style. Yep. Like ChatGPT can do that in, in seconds, right? And yes. it's really fun. Um, <laughs> it is really fun. I've done that actually. It's a hilarious <laughs> thing. Um, but what it can't do is that it, it can't, create a more detailed task out of that like how are you going to apply that if you're teaching a western or a lit class or how are you going to like come up with your own song based off that like you need to have that creativity to do that right or instruct it to do that it can't think of it on its own um so those big general open and they're really fun but they're the ones that give you like weird crazy answers or they're wrong or right um, that's where the hallucinations where start from. kicking in yeah, yeah 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 they they'll kick in there um, and then, um, the more like detailed and specific ones, they're the ones where it's like, did you email your coworker or your client, you know, before lunch, those are what we hear in our day to day. And mm -hmm. for generative AI, that's what they hear when they need to get something done in like a specific topic or like a mindset, like the audience, right. because when you're, we're told, like, did you email someone before lunch? We know it's about our role, our responsibility in this business and we intuitively know that, but with generative AI, you have to tell it that. Right. Right. 
And the other thing is that I've noticed with AI is that if you try and give it a big chunk of information, do this, do this, do this, do this, it really struggles with it. So as far as prompting goes, one of the things that I've found successful is just starting at the basic. And I forget you had that one prompt on there is um, if you don't know, just ask. So I'll ask, can you do this? Or um, what can you tell me about this? You know, whatever it is, I may have uploaded an Excel file and just find out what can it decipher so that I can ask the next question. And then what I've found really helpful, and this can also get you in the, in the problems is if you extend it too long, but just narrowing down and just asking it to do one thing. Um, So I think copywriting, if we use that uh, as an example, because so many people are using it, at least in in my industry, in the marketing industry, Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of conversation on how do you get the best copyright? How can you get long form content, you know, Mm -hmm. 2,000, 3,000 words, which AI is terrible at. Um, Mm -hmm. It just wants to give you the bullet points most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's a matter of, okay, well, One of the things we'll do now is, first of all, come up with the title. So just simply asking, hey, I've got it. I would like to write a blog post about X, Y, and Z. Can you give me 10 topic ideas or title ideas for that? All right. It gives me 10 titles. I grab the best one or maybe I meld two together. And then I go, now I'll say, I want to create a blog post for this title. Now, I because I know the title, I'm going to give it the title that I wanted to write a blog post. But I'm not going to ask it to write a blog post. That was that's kind of like the the beginning, just learning. You know, driver's ed. We're still inside on the um, the inside classroom portion, taking the test. And <laughs> so now, instead of asking it to write the entire article, I'm going to ask for an outline. And I yeah, might right. state that, hey, these are three key points or five key points that I'd like you to cover in this outline. And then it gives me an outline. Then we expand from that. Okay, that's a great outline. Give it feedback. However, could you also do this and, you know, maybe put step or um, on the outline, put number two in the first place and reprioritize it. And then it goes, okay, yes. And now I like the outline. Now I'm going to go to the next step. Can you write an introduction for the outline? You know, can you Mm -hmm. create the content? And then as it creates the content, I will go back and I'll go, you know what, in section two, um, I think you should include something about this also. And one of the things I do like about ChatGTP in this is the fact that it'll go, oh, that's a great idea, you know, based on uh, marketing, blah, 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 or for readability, you're right, we should do this. And so I appreciate it says that, but at the same time, scratch my head going, well, if you think that's such a great idea, why don't you take that into account in the first place? And it's just not there at this time. Nah, it's yeah. It's like having a a younger student. It's still learning. Yeah. Yeah. It's still learning. And I think the other thing people have to be careful of when prompting is that, and I don't know if you've run into this very Mm -hmm. often is um, when it starts hallucinating, which is it makes up stuff, just random things simply because it's it's forgotten what we originally talked about. So if you go too long, and I don't know how far that is, it kind of, the, the beginning conversation starts getting hazy or it just gets kicked out of the buffer because it can't buffer that much information. Yeah, I've found that I have to remind it. I have to tell it, go back through this chat, right. rescan to you know remember my, my brand style, my verbiage style, my, my rhythm. Um, and then I'll ask it, okay, give me like a three sentence, you know, description of, of what I do to make sure right. that it's there. And okay. it kind of like, it's like a refresher, like, it, like, a, right. we're in kind school, of condenses have, like, all the information. Yeah. 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 In school, you'd have the teacher be like, all right, remember what we did last week? And then they right. do a quick two second refresher kind of thing. So yeah. it, it is helpful to think of it that way. And I realized that, you know, for a lot of people, that's really inconvenient. <laughs> well, it is if it's it really if it's is. the magic pill, right? If it, if AI is supposed yeah. to be the magic pill, where I just say, "Give me great work," and that's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, yeah, it's it's a real inconvenient to convenience to ask ChatGTP um, to be more specific in the areas that you want. 
by telling it. Yeah. And I, to, you know, to your audience and to everybody listening, I got to say, I'm sorry, you just can't have to deal with it for a little bit. Yeah. Like that's just, that's, that's the trade-off for being right. able, for being able to do what it can do. Yep. The trade-off is that you got to kind of, you got to treat it as an assistant or. Uh, as a but it also makes the, it makes whatever it is that you're doing uniquely yours. Right. Because if yeah. I can just go on and, and tell me about blue widgets or write me a blog post about blue widgets, it's going to spit out the same content all the time. You know, mm -hmm. where if I'm more interested in this aspect of a blue widget and maybe a competitor's more interested in this aspect of a blue widget, the content, the tone, everything about it should be uniquely different because of what we've added into the mix. Yeah. And that's like, that comes down to this, I'm, I'm on this personal journey of figuring out how to make AI as my assistant to amplify like my personal connection with people mm -hmm. instead of having personalized templated content. And mm. I don't know how you and your, your field and with marketers and copywriting, but there's a lot of pressure for them to create content. And yeah. You know, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that the content that they make is being, you know, verified by their or whatever, that's the wrong word, is being like looked at by their boss or whoever as right. like being great work. It just needs to hold people's attention. Correct. And there there's templated ways to do that. Yep. And so for myself, I'm just trying to figure out how do I keep using AI to make it improve what I do to keep that personal connection? Um, cause I really don't want to try to be like everybody else. And I don't yep. have a shot in heck of, right. of matching like your podcast of matching other guys, like YouTube channels of matching newsletters. Like I know what I can do and the way I do it right. and what I care about. And I can't lose that focus. And that's what I keep reminding in the AI to tell it, like, this is what I do. This is why I do it. Like, don't right. lose that. And I find that it creates content that, you know, it's close, but it's not me. I need to add in my own, you know, right. grandmother yeah. and, you know, driver's yeah. license and fishing for AI and right. diving for AI, like my own analogies and way I view it. Um, AI can't do, it can't replicate. Right. So that's what makes it personal. And I'm still learning that. And I hope that your audience, and especially all those copywriters out there, like, yeah, don't forget that. Like that's yeah. when I read something that's personal or someone sends me something on LinkedIn that's personal. I'll open it and I'll respond. But if I get that standard, nah, see right. ya. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. All right. So yeah. let's uh, let's jump into then the three building blocks of prompting because once you understand what this does in the car, what the little flappy things do, and you know, depending on if it's a stick or an automatic, now we can now that we can conceptually understand what we're doing, we can actually get results. So what are those building blocks? that people need to know to get the most out of their prompts. Well, the first thing I'll say is that some people may be thinking, well, what's the elect the EV Tesla version of AI? And there isn't one yet. So we're still in, we're still in the stick in the automatic mode. Yeah. Um, so prompting, prompting just has really three simple building blocks. And the base of it is the general open-ended or simple ones that we said, pass me the salt. That's the one mm -hmm. we use in real life. Um, the other one is uh, like, Think about eventually like Google Bar will be connected to the to the Internet and you'll be able to ask it, like, what's the weather for, for my city? That's a right. general prompt that's connected to you. But then the one that we all use pretty much, you know, to help us do emails or to write stuff or detailed prompts. Mm -hmm. So these are ones that you're making for like a specific outcome. Like I need you to do this this way at this link so that I can have this result. And, um, and then the last one is the one where all the stuff that's like intuitive to who we are, like we know what job we're in, we know what, how we need to respond to an email versus a family email and a work email. Those are the things that you have to tell it and mm -hmm. you have to put it in that mindset of you are a, um, content writer for a fortune 500 finance company. Right. So it has to make it that way and, and know that those are the terms, the terms, the verbiage, the style, so that it's not thinking about adding in, you know, content writing for nutrition or fitness. 
Right. Or, but, and I think even more important, and you kind of touched on this is going to be the tone of the article, right? Because the tone for Mm -hmm. a financial article versus a mommy blogger article, as an example, that tone should be uniquely different simply because your audience is uniquely different. And I think as, as a prompter, as you know, as you, the audience, as, as you're prompting, give chat GTP or whatever AI you're using the uh, heads up that, Hey, this is who my audience is. And I know one of the things that I, uh, that I've seen some third party, I don't know if they're plugins or um, they're their own systems. And I can't think of any right now. They use chat GTP at the base, but they've got their own overlay is they'll actually say, you know, upload an article that uh, will give us a tone and voice. So if you are yeah. a content writer, as an example, and you still want to maintain your own your own tone and voice, the best way to do that is give it reference material. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really helpful. Um, another way of giving it reference material, I'll use magazines. So depending on what I'm writing content for, I'll say, you know, kind of write in the style of X magazine as it relates to the industry that I'm writing for. Yeah, you were talking about that, like, how do you do a 3000 word, you know, kind of article essay? Mm-hmm. And I was thinking like, well, the, there is a way to do it, but it's, it's it would take almost as much time as writing it yourself. But you would, ah, you would unless you've got the right prompt, sir. Ah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that. Um, so let's let's go to the next point, and we'll we'll do that okay. example of like what, how you can do that. Yep. Um, so what I did because I I had the same problem when I was in school trying to figure out, you know, how do I take this like research that I'd done and make it so that anyone can follow it, doesn't matter where they're from or or what they right. what what their, what their work is. And just to clarify, when you say in school, you were not trying to become a doctor or something, you were studying (laughs) what? (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. I was a, it was grad school for, um, strategic communications and organizational leadership. And so I, um, worked on how would you create an artificial intelligence training curriculum so that a new intern and a C-suite are connected on how AI is used and the terms and the business metrics for it, right? Like, how would you create that? So um, that's what I did and made, and that became the foundation for my business. Um, And out of that, I thought, I need to make something that's simple, but that works no matter the AI, because the problem is that before ChatGPT, there were all different ways to talk to AI, and a lot of it was really with coding. But now there's a framework and the process that I made is called Oprah. And it's like, you know, you get an AI, you get an AI, you get an AI. (laughs) Um, So I was thinking about that and this is what, this is what works. And it works whether you're on ChatGPT, it works whether you're on Google Bard, it works whether you're going to be in like um, Adobe when they come out with their generative AI, Facebook's working on one. Um, And it works the same because there's the same framework for how prompts work. Right. And this is kind of a little bit bigger than just prompts. This is this is for you as a as a person on how you want to frame it all to keep it in your mind, so that if you switch AIs, you don't need to switch the way you you do it. Right. right? So you you need to know what you want in the end for the prompt. So that's the outcome. How, like, what are you trying to get to? And then you need to know who the prompt is for. Like, are you writing it from your point of view? Are you writing it for an audience as a as a content writer? Then you need to have the prompt and we'll go through like what the prompt is made of. Um, and then you need to revise it. This is the inconvenient part where you have to kind of <laughs> edit it and fact check it. <laughs> I love the fact uh, that, that this is an inconvenience, but it is. It is. It is. It, it, it is frustrating I, I a little bit. I talk to people that I, I work with or consult or train and they're just like, that's a lot of work. Right. I'm like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it takes me five minutes to create a four hour, you know, what normally would have taken me four hours. Actually, it's probably about a half hour. A good article on my end, like a real thought out long format probably takes a good half hour. Well, you're doing better um, than me because it takes me at least so, two hours. Oh, does it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but I'm like, 100%. how many, how many hours are we saving though, even though it is an inconvenience and it will get better over time? 
You know, I actually thought about that the other day um, because I was thinking like I can get so much more done using AI. And then I was realizing I wasn't finishing all of the projects that I had because mm. I would like do one thing and then go to the next and then go to the next. And it wasn't meeting my standard. So this week, actually, after the long weekend, I sat down and was like, all right, what are the three projects I'm getting done for September? And I'm not working on anything else. Nothing right, else. That's smart. And uh, it's paid off huge dividends this week already. Um, but I think we kind of have to have that little check of like, what do I want to complete versus mm -hmm. being like productive for it? Right. Because if, right. you know, again, personal and personalized and it's different for everybody. You're, I cannot believe you can write an article in 30 minutes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. It takes me, it takes me time. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is, is like what we're talking about, like when you bring it out into the world and you apply it, um, that's what you use, what's been created by the AI and you verified it and revised it. And so, you know, what, there are some things where like it would have taken hours and hours, like summarizing articles. AI right. is awesome about yeah. just scanning it and turning it into bullets and key yeah. takeaways. Like yeah. same awesome. thing with data. Yeah. Yeah. There are PDFs that I've gone through, um, that really helped me. I have to double check a little bit cause it's technical, but mm -hmm. they really help at least getting the big takeaways at first so I can decide if this is something worth reading all the way through or not. Right. Yep. That's fine. I'm the same um, way with podcast. Now I just get the summarized version. I have, I got an AI plugin on YouTube and it just gives okay. me a summary. And so a lot of times I'll, because it's always the title, right? The title gets you, um, yeah. unless it's somebody you listen to on a regular basis and you're just going to play them regardless. But if it's like, yeah. Ooh, there's that one thing in the title that caught my attention, but I don't know where it's at in an hour long podcast. Right. Right. I'll just go through and I'll have AI, um, give me a, a summary of what's going on and then I'll do a cool. cursory scan and find that one piece. And if it's like, Ooh, I want to find out what the outlying story is, then I'll go ahead and listen to the podcast. Otherwise, yeah. Okay. I've caught my information and I'm, I'm on to the next thing. It'll be really neat to see if it's possible for AI to do that for people who are like auditory learners, like who listen and they retain and, and like get it. Right. I can do it like what you're talking about. I do it way better when it just summarizes it and then I read it. Yeah. Like I can, I can read very, very quickly, but when I listen, like I have to be really focused because mm. like I have to like hear it and listen and, and think and like it, I learn it far right. deeper. Like I retain it far better, but yeah. for just quick stuff like you're talking about. Yeah. just let me read it. Like I'll yeah. go through articles and I'll, I have one this of these days, one of these days, sir, they're just going to jack you right in the back of the cortex. We're going to do it matrix style. <laughs> that movie wasn't, it was, it's a creepy movie, but it's great. Um, yeah. Hey, do you have yeah. something called reader mode? Have you heard of that app? I have not heard of that one yet. No. All right. Well, if any of your listeners um, just want to read an article without going, getting pop-ups or seeing a bunch of like weird visuals on the side or those weird, they're not ads, but they're like clickbait ads. Mm -hmm. um, there's a app called or a plugin called um, reader mode. And it just, changes the screen to be just text nothing else oh and nice just the article text. Oh, yeah okay I that's probably it. is that a, a chrome plugin or something then yeah you know okay reader yeah. mode all right i have to check that out i love it um okay but let's stay on all track right. that's what we use the powerpoint for <laughs> are we ready for the next slide then yeah yeah i'm ready all right now so we got um all right in prompting same way when you're driving a car, like you get in, in the car, you sit in the seat and then you got your keys, you, you put it in. That's how you start it. And if you're in a stick shift, you got to put in the clutch. Um, that's how you start it. That's kind of the domain. That's the general area of what you need to do to get it going. And that's how you start a car. You need, that's the general way to get it moving. The next thing with it is, you know, what you, do you want to be done? So are you going to get that car out of park, like you said, where you had the handle? Or are mm -hmm. you going to get the stick shift and put it in gear or put it in reverse, whatever you need to do? That's what you're telling the car to do to get moving for what you want to do. And with prompting, that's the task. Like we're, we got an All example right. that we'll show. But, you know, when everyone, everyone says, you know, write me an email, that's the task. Um, so the next thing is the persona, the audience. Who is the task for? Are you writing it for yourself? Are you writing it from yourself? 
Are you writing it to an audience um, or do you need to take the perspective or point of view over a certain audience to help you create it? Um, I guess in the car, that would be paint. That'd be, that'd be the color yeah, or yeah, stone. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the length, like how long do you want the outcome to be? This isn't really talked about a lot, but it's really important. Uh, I found that, like you said, chat to BT, the longer it gets, the it, it veers off and kind of tapers off. Mm-hmm. So I try to help keep it specific so that it um, knows like, all right, it's a five sentence email, you know, right. no more, no less. Um, and then the tone, you might need to remind it of your own personal style, but you could also say, you know, um, I've written one where it's like, you're a high school history teacher creating a lesson plan. Um, keep the language so that um, high schoolers can follow along and not feel overwhelmed. Right. Right. So right. You're, you're keeping it specific to who you're talking to without telling the the AI to take that point of view of who you're talking to. Right. It's a long winded way of saying, you know, reach your audience. Right. Yeah. And and I think it's really important to keep it simple, especially if you're in business, because I think a lot of business people will get lost in jargon. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, yeah, you know your business inside now. But if I'm just coming to a point where I need your services, as an example, um, if your tone doesn't match my knowledge, then there's a disconnect. And being able to simplify things is super important. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, You could translate it. You could ask ChatGPT or the AI to be like, hey, I am a highly proficient professional with 20 years of experience in this industry. I am going to write something out. I want you to make it business casual for a uh, general person to follow. Yeah, that's super smart. Yeah. I hope your audience uh, writes that down or saves it in the audio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that is that is super smart. All right. So we've got, what is it? Five different parts then essentially. So Mm -hmm. this is kind of the thought process that people want to go through. And we talked about this in the last week's episode also Mm -hmm. kind of stepping through that process. Cause if you understand what the process is, what, what the AI is looking for, then it's much easier to then start asking the right question. There was a movie, I forget the name of the movie, uh, where it was, that's not the right question. And it was kind of, you would ask, it was a computer and it would tell you that's not the right question. And so you had to, you had to rephrase your question and then it would say, that's the right question. And then it would give was a it, Shall we play a game? I don't remember. It's, it's, it was a long time ago. That much I remember. What was that movie with Matthew Broderick? Um, War Games. That could have been it because that's like 80s, I think, late yeah. 80s or something. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been it. That could have been it. No. So, all right. So we're taking these five concepts now and then we're going to do what with it? Yeah. So that's a great segue. These five concepts are kind of like an easy checklist for anyone to follow when you're creating a prompt. And um, I, I really emphasize like it's really simple. Like you do this naturally every day. We do this. um intuitively every day with people and the right. focus here is to you have to remember to tell chat gpt or the ai what you want out of it and so right. the domain is in brown that's the general area that the prompt is written under that you can see so the prompt is you know you are an interior designer all right, right? Like, so and your- just to sorry just to make that even simpler because i think there is a disconnect i remember when the, the internet became a thing and social media and people didn't realize that when you posted on Facebook, it was real people on the other end that were reading what you had to say. So it's mm-hmm. like you don't you don't just post the post. It's like if you were going to communicate with somebody, if you're going to call up your best friend and say, hey, I had this exciting thing. It's the same thing you're going to share on Facebook, ideally, simply because it is a human being on the other side. So. If you think of ChatGTP as a personal assistant who can do anything, which version of that personal assistant are you wanting to talk to? In this case, it's the interior designer. So you got to let ChatGTP know, hey, you're not a financial planner today. You're not an SEO strategist today. You're actually an interior designer. So let it know what version of your personal assistant you would like it to be. And just think yep. of it as a person. Who am I? Who would I talk to if I need interior design help? I'm going to call an interior designer. So that's who I need you to be right now. 
Yeah, that's a great point. And I'm probably going to um, copy that and paste it and use it in my own. Uh... Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> but I think as, as I think because there is a disconnect when we're on a computer, we don't realize that the end result is for other humans. Mm -hmm. So if we if we can make that human connection, even though it's AI and we don't necessarily need to humanize AI, it's going to happen mm -hmm. regardless. Um, but we have to recognize that if we as humans, we know how to communicate with humans. So just pretend that, OK, this is a personal assistant who can be anything and everything that I need it to be but I got to let it know which version of that you are first. Yeah. And again, the key word there is personal and making sure it's yeah. not overly personalized. Yeah. The, um, the domain for that, like you said, like making it personal and reminding ChatGPT, like what it is, is that, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you're an interior designer, so it knows following that what it needs to, to, to go into. And the technical term is a system prompt, but really the domain is, is the easier way to think of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the next thing is, you know, you're going to tell it, like, what are you going to do? And you're going to provide a step-by-step -step guide. Like it right. knows that the, that's the type of thing it needs to create. Um, then I like to put the link then next so that it knows those instructions follow one another. And since mm -hmm. it's AI and it's coding, it helps to have those instructions follow one another doesn't make it better or worse. It just makes it easier for it to, to get your, your prompt right. And it's outcome right. to be what you want without having to revise it. Um, and then the length, like less than two pages, you know, on a computer screen, two pages can be, you know, what, that long, but All like right. for us, you know, I, sometimes I don't want to like know every detail. I just want the overview. Just tell me All like right. the steps I'll go to home Depot and talk to Ron Swanson and figure it out from there. All right. Um, and then for who, who is it for, for a small family redecorating? And then you have the insert for the square footage um, in the living room and a type of building on a budget of how much that budget is. Right. And then the tone, I really wrote this specifically so that you could see that tone doesn't have to be just about who, but it can be a part of a style. Mm. So a modern minimalist style is a tone. Right. When you walk okay. into that room, you feel that style and you know that, and I can't think the interior is like, it's like the tone of the room. Um, right. But, uh, and then ask it for help. Like, give me recommendations for the stuff I don't want to think about. Color schemes, right. furniture, accessories, um, and see what it comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And, and this is a general example um, for business, use this as to be very specific, like saying, like, um, you were talking about data extraction. You could be like, you are a, um, financial advisor, provide a step-by-step -step guide for dealing with interest rates that are at 6% and with, for a family of four who are on a budget for a house, you know, and fill in the blanks there right. for yourself, um, and see what it comes up with for your benefit. And when you use it that way, the results are really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah, I'm just, sorry. There's just so much that we could be talking about, but we're going to, we're, we're already almost 40 minutes into this. So I think we should probably wrap it up at this point. <laughs> <laughs> there's just so much, there's so much, and there's more coming down as yeah, far as I'm, AI yes, integration. Yeah, thank you so much for for uh, not forgetting this last slide. So what's upcoming with prompting is that it's going to be everywhere. Like yeah. this is the way you will talk to the apps that you use, like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. For some people, um, you'll start typing and it'll say, do you want the magic assistant to help you? That's right. that's a generative form of AI that's similar to ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. um, same thing for Adobe. They're working on doing it text to text to visual so that they can right. make images or you can instruct it to do design alterations yep. and it can do it in real time for you. Yep. And it's so already, really it's already in the works as far as like Photoshop. I can, I don't, I, I feel like we already talked about this where I can take a picture, squiggle it out and tell it to put a window in there. Yeah. And like what they're thinking about is also like you have a document and then you scan the document and you tell it, you know, change the heading to this font, change oh, okay. this. 
like restructure page four, right? Like you like tell okay. it to really assist and edit right. very specifically instead of you spending all the time doing it. I can't wait till that comes out because then I can make great content. <laughs> <laughs> Use and awesome PDFs and find, ebooks. I've already closed it down. Um, who? Let me just pull it up real quick. Because I am spending more time using Microsoft Designer. Are you? Yeah, yeah, for just like blog post covers and those type of things. And it's interesting because uh, what I've noticed in the last week is I'll tell it bump, 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 bump. And then if it'll go through and it thinks and it'll spit out some images and then it has a suggestion prompt. And so it'll take what I've already written and it'll mm. go, here's the suggestion prompt. You want to try that? And I'm like... Okay. And I've already taken a couple of nuggets out of that. So, um, you know, most of what I work with businesses, service-based businesses. And so, uh, one of the things I've noticed with the, with the designer was that it was always saying a professional image. I'm like, okay, mm. that's important to note. So now every time mm. I tell it, I go, okay, I need a professional image for a blog post that's in landscape. Cause I want it long and skinny for uh, mm -hmm. a website. I don't want a square or anything for Instagram, mm -hmm. but I could tell it, Hey, I want a professional Instagram story photo about blah, blah, blah. Um, and it'll automatically do the size, but it's nice mm -hmm. that it has it in there because now I can get more value out of the product because it's teaching me how to prompt correctly. You know, if only, if only my 240Z back in the day that I learned how to drive stick in could help me with the clutch and the gas pedal and go, Hey, maybe you should try this instead of this. I think you they might did have a better it was a night rider. Yeah. <laughs> was it Kit? What was the car's name? Uh, yeah. Kit, Kit did a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, well, what is it that you are so interested about with prompting that's coming up? Cause you know, I, I get really curious about this in a different way. Mm. So I'd like to hear what you are curious yeah. about. With what, where my curiosity is. So for me as a marketing individual, I have, I need, I, it's the routine stuff, right? I got to do these routine projects on a regular basis. So part of what I'm trying to figure out and Chat GTP is helpful now because if you've got their pro account, they have custom instructions. So oh, okay. within custom instructions, there's two fields. Uh, what would you like Chat T Chat GTP to know about you to provide better response? Now I can put in a little synopsis of the business in there. Mm -hmm. So maybe my business, a client's business, and those are all just templates. So again, I've got a folder called AI prompts. And now I've got a different prompt for each of my uh, clients. Mm -hmm. And then how would you like chat GPT to respond? And right now I'm using the per professor synapsis prompt, which I found on YouTube. And oh, okay. I will, I'm going to do a video on him um, because it's really, it's a, it's an incredibly smart prompt in the sense that if I tell it, I need it to, um, look at this Excel data information. Maybe it's for pay-per-click ads or something like that. Uh, it will automatically determine who it needs to be within the prompt. So it will figure <laughs> out, was that the domain then that you were talking about? It's yeah. kind of, it, yeah. it already prompt, knows, yeah. it already knows that, oh, okay, if I'm analyzing data, then you need a prompt or a version of me, that personal assistant, I need the personal assistant who understands data analysis and it'll yeah. automatically recognize that and it'll say, okay, I am a data analysis expert who knows how to work proficiently in Excel. Let me take a look at your sheet and then it'll do something. Now, let's say it's pay-per-click. So the first thing it does though is the data analysis comes up and says, this is what I found. Now, if I'm shifting to, well, okay, uh, find me uh, negative keywords within this whole list. Um, and maybe you've got a thousand keywords that you've been running ads on forever. Mm -hmm. I can now go in and say, okay, find me the top 10% of uh, keywords that have a high cost per click, but a low click-through rate. So those are keywords that are not efficient. They're costing me a mm -hmm. lot of money 
and not many people are interested in them. So why spend the high dollars? It will automatically switch then. Oh, okay. I am a marketing expert in Google pay per click. I will identify using, um, the, the analysis part, uh, in order to identify this. And so huh. it automatically can switch roles on the fly as it deems necessary. And I don't have to wow. tell it. It just automatically does it. If I need a recipe, oh, okay. Uh, maybe I need a fancy chef recipe. It'll probably say, okay, I am a um, head chef at a four, five star Michelin rated restaurant in France or something. And that's, that's the persona it will take on. So cool. for that, for me, that's huge because I need, I need to, part of the fun of prompting is figuring out, well, how do I, if I don't know what the right person is for the job, mm -hmm. how do I tell it who I need it to be? Yeah. And this yeah. prompt kind of does that automatically. There's other cool. disadvantages to this prompt that we won't go into right now. Um, but I do That's for love your video, that right? aspect of it. Well, I'm sorry. That'll be in the video. That'll be for a video. Yeah. Cause we're like, this is, this is probably our longest podcast, um, to date, which is fine. Cause I love talking to you. Um, I was going to say that you could use that. If I could have used that prompt to turn my car into a Jeep, that would have been awesome. Growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, yeah, Otter, Logan, Otter, it can just tell Logan really would never be in a Jeep. <laughs> well, you know, on that, I'm just thinking, cause every burning man there's, you know, I don't know if you heard about burning man out in the playa in the desert and they just had yeah, huge storms. Rain. They had just had huge storms. So it turned everything in the mud. So people are getting stuck out there, uh, limited supplies, and they can't get anywhere because their vehicles can't do it. So that would be the perfect thing. If you happen to be a Burning Man, you're in the ply. It's like, I need a mud buggy that, <laughs> you know, is designed for, for driving in the mud that can get me out of here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, ultimately, me. yeah, I'm trying to, at the end of the day, I want to systemize things where I know I can get a consistent result because mm -hmm. when I find a prompt that I like that works, but then something changes within chat GTP two weeks down the road, yeah. which is really frustrating. Yeah. And then I start I getting different well, results. I'm like, ah. I know it's the hardest part to, to share with people that it's not, it's just not permanent. It's not like concrete. Yeah. It doesn't set and stay. Right. But as it gets smarter, um, I think, and, and I don't know contextually how much data it can actually keep track of at one time. Um, there are some great tools that I'm playing with at this point that do really good. They, um, so there's different tools. If you need to add, uh, internal links to blog post, it actually has a separate field oh, where you can put all your internal links that you would like to have. Uh, I mentioned earlier for tone and voice, uh, upload an article as an example or multiple articles as references. And so it may not even be like yours. It could be somebody else's like, oh, I want this written in this tone and style because of the unique content that's being created. So being able to do that. So I guess what I'm looking for from chat GTP, and they've already started doing this with the custom instructions is I think it'd be great to have customizable fields, right? Where I can go, um, these are just for internal links, right? So wherever you can within this article, uh, use these internal links. Uh, this is the business that you are writing for. So mm. this is, here it is. It's got the business, it's got the style, it's got all of that. Um, and then here are, uh, five related keywords that I want you to write an article about and be able to plug that in. So if those could actually be separate fields so that the coding on the back end could figure out how to contextualize that correctly to get the best results, I think that would be, that would be awesome. It'll take some time. Yeah. It'll get out. there though at some point. I mean, yeah, it's pretty, like I said, we're just going to, even if it's little suction cups on the forehead, they're just going to read your mind. Um, but of course, all of all of the stuff that that they read your mind is going to be their intellectual property, and you'll start getting ads for stuff that you're like, oh my gosh, how did they know? I haven't even <laughs> talked about that because it's taboo. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty close already to nailing yeah. those uh, ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
Is there Ryan? I love this as always. Is there anything else I could uh, answer for you? I don't think so. I think uh, we've covered a lot for everybody. Um, and we always appreciate it. Logan, I appreciate you having you on the show. And uh, we're going to keep this going. And as we've we've talked about, if you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas that you'd love for Logan to talk about specifically, be sure to let us know so we can cover that in future episodes. Until next time, hope you all have a great week. Take care.